Okay, so next up, what we need to do is we need now need to create a component state variable. And this component state variable is going to be really important to us because as you know, we've created a component parameter where we pass in that initial date. That's going to be the kind of the month that we are displaying. Now that is only a component parameter. You can't actually update a component parameter. So what we need to do is we need to take the value of that component parameter and we need to persist that with inside a component state variable because we're going to want to change that component state variable for then our UI to update such as as we're going to want to display kind of like February up here because as I'm in February and 2024 these dates here as we the user clicks on this we're going to want to then increase the calendar month to then the next month and of course we need to be updating that yeah, that component state variable so let's now first create that component state variable so with the calendar component selected here move up here to state management and let's add the field in and we're just going to call this one input date like that go to the type and it's just going to be then a date and time. So just hit confirm. So now we've got that. Now what we now need to do is we now need to then make a change in our application to then set that input date as soon as the actual component has been initialized. So we do that by going to the action flow editor, open up the action flow editor, had do an add action as you can see here within in the on initialization so we're now going to go to state here and we say update component state set the field so we're going to say right we're going to set the input date and we're going to say well what you're going to do you're going to set the value and where is that value going to come from of course it's going to be the component parameter so just select that and here is the component parameter here so that's all we're just going to do hit confirm and that's all nicely set now once we've got that then we know everything that's going to then happen with inside a component is going to then manipulate that input date so first thing that we can do though is we can change the kind of the formatting of these here we can actually now give these some characteristics so just hit the month text move up to here go to then the component state variable just here just scroll down here you can see I've got input date just select that we're going to then say right well what, what are we going to display here well I just want to display the month so I'm going to go date and time format choose the date time format now none of these are going to work for me but you can see here that here we've got February here so this must be something like MMMM like that you've got three M's there for a short like a shorter kind of month format but we want to show the full month so I'm going to take MMM so I'm going to go down to custom and I'm going to go to the custom format to MMMM like that and of course we just need to put a default value of zero in here hit confirm so that's all nicely in for us now what I can do is I can just select this one again I'm going to click on the three dots copy the variable I'm going to go now to the hello world here go up to the text I'm now going to paste that variable in but all I want to do is now I want to pick out the year now the year is just going to be represented by like a lowercase y so just choose that everything else remains the same hit confirm and that's all nicely set for us now so that's now all set um, we can now what we need to do then is we need to move on to the next bit where we need to then handle a conditional check for that and that kind of that initial kind of calendar value that gets sort of passed in. This is the handling of this initial selected date. So what we can do there is we can go back to then the action flow editor here. We can click on the plus here, go to add conditional. And here we are going to look, we're going to select a condition. We're going to say it's a single condition. The first value is going to be, and we're just going to select that. And we're going to say, right, here's our component parameters. Here's our initial selected date. Now, just just choose initial selected date hit confirm and you are going to say is set so if this is set we're going to move in a happy direction here if it's not set we're just going to ignore it we're not going to worry about it so just move that down here and just hit confirm and hit the little plus and we're going to add an action in and we're going to set that component state variable as well so i'm going to go to state i'm going to say update component state set the add fields and choose the selected date and then of course we just then to move up here we say set value and then the value to set of course will then be the initial selected date and hit confirm so that's gonna be really important so if we pass that initially selected date in we then want to set the actual date of the component state variable itself and then that will then be represented on the calendar when we kind of do all of that formatting so just hit close there and we are now good to move on to the next bit Okay, so this is where it gets a little bit more interesting now. We're going to now um, apply some visual styling to the current current selected date within our calendar. So if you remember, back on our grid view here, we had um, a variable name called calendar. This is representing each and every one of the kind of the days that's kind of displayed here within inside our calendar. So we need to say, right, is the selected date the same as the calendar? So this could be this one here. If it's the same, then of course that one then becomes blue. So how do we do that? 
that. Well, let's move back over to the day container because it's the day container that we're going to manipulate the kind of the fill color. Move to where it says fill color here, and we're going to go down here. We're going to choose the um, the conditional value if then else. Just select that. So what we now need to do is we need to set the value here of the color. So this is going to be our primary color. So so we now need to apply a condition to that itself. So we're going to choose this particular one here, and we're going to choose our condition at the top. We're going to say a single condition, and here's our first value. So if I just select like this and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to our calendar item so here it is and I'm going to say right okay the data structure field and here is our selected date here is the calendar date and I'm going to format this this is going to be really important because we only want to kind of match up sort of day day m m y y y y okay to represent the full kind of date so I'm going to say date and time format options now, I don't think there's anything here that, um, oh, there's this one here, D D M Y. So just select that one. This is represents, we're not interested in the time. We just want the actual date itself. So there it is. That's fine. Hit confirm. And we're going to say, are you now equal to, if I select that, and now I'm going to go to the value and I'm now going to go down to then our component state properties here. And I'm going to say the actual selected date itself. So choose selected date. I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to go date and time format, choose the date time format here, choose then the DMY, that one just there and just choose that. I think that's good. Just hit confirm. Now we know that then if those two then match, we're going to then set the background color to then be primary. Otherwise, we're just going to leave it not filled itself. Just hit confirm. That is all good. Now let's just quickly try running this in test mode. Let's see how this looks. Okay, so here we're running a test mode. Let's try selecting a date there. Brilliant, there we go. So we've now got this um, rather oddly looking kind of square box here that's representing the actual date, but that's fine. We can carry on and we can start continuing to do some styling there. So let's now move back over to Flutterflow and carry on the styling. Okay, so with our day container selected, let's just move to the right hand side here. Let's give the border radius here something to uh, say maybe eight or something, just to give it kind of those rounded kind of edges. And what we also want to do is we will kind of want to kind of say, well, if this particular um, uh, actual date is the current date in time. We want to put a very, very thin kind of board around it. Okay, so I'm just going to go here with say border width. I'm going to say 0 0.8. But of course, the border is not really going to do anything yet because we've now got to put in another kind of condition there. We need to say, okay, does is this a child of the grid? Is this the current date and time? If it is, then just put that board around it. We can do that now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab hold of this one here and I'm just going to copy this because it'll be very, very similar to what we need. So just copy the variable. I'm going to move back over to the border color here. Just select that and I'm going to paste that in here. But I'm going to make a slight change to this particular condition. So if I just select that, now instead of me checking whether, because this is the calendar item here. So instead of me checking that one against the current selected one, let's just choose this here and I can remove this particular one we're not interested in this one just choose the value and we're going to go down then now to then the uh, actual uh, where is it the global properties here and choose the sorry the to the global properties and I'm going to choose the current time like that now here again we just need to do the same thing again date time format go to the date time and we're going to go to then the uh, the DMY just choose that one and then just hit confirm and hit confirm again so what's going to happen now of course is that my border is going to get this very very subtle kind of like border color if not then of course I'm not going to have anything at all so if it's not the current date and time then don't show any border at all just hit confirm like that and that is good if I just quickly test that in test mode let's see if we've got that on the on the UI Okay, so there we go. So we've got the 24th that's currently selected because today is February the 24th. So that's all working for us. You can see here now that we've kind of got all of those dates selected. But one thing you might also notice here is that it currently is black at the moment. I don't really like the black for the text here. So again, we need to put some more conditional sort of logic in there now to kind of style up now the inverse here. So if we've got something that is blue, then we're going to want to make sure the text is white. So let's move over to Flutterflow. Let's get that configured now. OK, so this is where it gets a little bit more complex because we've got to handle various different types of text styles here for this particular calendar. You recall that we've got the previous and the next months. Well, that text needs to be slightly gray. The general calendar date that's not the selected date is just black. And then, of course, we've got then the selected date that, of course, is then got to be white because it's, it's going to be on the blue kind of primary color background. So just bear with me on this one as we walk through this. Hopefully it'll be quite clear, but certainly do take away the full sample here and just have a look in your own time to hopefully get an idea of the logic that's kind of put in here.
Okay, so bidet text selected. Let's move down here to the right hand side. Let's choose the text color option because that's where all of the work is going to be. Just scroll down here and we're going to want to choose the conditional of if then else. Just select that. And it's the first one that we're going to need to do our work in. Just select that one here. And we're going to do a condition and it's going to be a combined and or, or. So the condition that we're going to sort of deal with at the moment is going to be the kind of the gray text. If the, uh, the calendar date is in the previous month or the next month, then we're going to set the the text to be gray. So this is going to be an or because we're going to be doing two checks here. So just choose the first one here, choose, choose this option here, go to then the uh, the calendar item, just select that. And we're just going to choose the data structure field. And we're going to select this one to say is the previous month. Now just hit confirm. So that's going to turn, return us back a true or a false. And we need to do the same thing here for the next month. So just select that one here. Let's move down to the calendar item. And here go to available options, go to data structure field, and then choose the next month and hit confirm. So once they are set, we now know that we can now make then a decision on whether this is gonna be kind of the gray text or it's going to be perhaps then the white text for the selected date. So we need to kind of put an extended condition with inside this particular option just here. Okay, just choose a selector here. Let's move down here to the conditional if then else and let's choose the first one here. And we're going to go to conditions and say single condition. Choose the first value here, select this particular one. And of course, we're going to choose then first the calendar item itself. Choose calendar item. We're going to say data structure field. Choose the selected one, choose calendar date. And here in the available options, we now need to do the date time format as we did previously. And this is where we kind of need to get the DMY here. So just select that there and just to hit then confirm. And we're now going to say, are you now equal to just select that. I'm going to go into the value here and this is where we're going to go down to now our component state variables and we're going to choose the actual selected date. So just choose here again, we need to say date time format here and then again choose the DMY like that and then hit confirm. So if these two now match, hit confirm then we're going to want to then set what I've got here as the alternative color. Uh, color. So this is just going to be white. So if the selected date matches the calendar uh, sort of date, they, we know that is the actual selected one. OK, so set that. And then if it's not, then the, the value that's going to get returned back on this particular condition, then is just going to be the gray. So just with this one selected here, just choose then the secondary text color like that and just hit confirm. So that is now all set up. So whew, quite a lot going on there, but that's all pretty good. Now, if we just go down to the value, we can go down here on this particular one is we can actually set this now to this one up here, which is very, very similar. So let's just grab hold of this one, just then copy the variable itself like that. And we're going to go down to this particular one here, just select this here, and we're just going to paste that particular variable in. But the only difference here, of course, is that is this particular color here. This is going to kind of, if any, none of the dates kind of match here, we're just going to go back to the primary text, which is going to kind of be like the, the kind of just the, the regular kind of black text for the calendar here. But we're just making sure that if they still do match up and none of these conditions kind of match up, then we're at least with it still checking to see if it's the currently selected date. Just hit confirm there and we should be good to go. Hit confirm. And I'm kind of hoping that we've got that set up perfectly correct. So let's head over to test mode now. Let's give that a quick test. Okay, so here we are in test mode. You can quite clearly see here now that we've got the kind of the gray text representing the previous month. So they look like they're hooked up okay. And we can see here now, if I just select one of these particular dates, we've now got the white text now on the blue, which is great. That's all that condition, uh, conditional work paying off. And of course, we've got then the 24th there. So that's all looking really good for us. So there's still a little bit more work to do. We haven't kind of got these buttons here working left and right. We need to get those updated. We know that we kind of got all of this working for us now. So hopefully by us, implementing the functionality to kind of move up a month or back a month, we should see this component all nicely play out. And of course, there is the reset button there as well, which we've still got to fix. So other than that, let's now carry on. So next up, we need to create some custom functions to kind of move our kind of our date on by one month or back one month based on the user selecting these particular sort of buttons. So what we can do there is we can create a custom function to kind of work all of that out for us. Um, you could even use AI to kind of generate this particular function. Alternatively, you could pop over to the Digital Pros at No Code Academy where I've got a code library there. And these are the functions that we need. So this is one for getting the next month date in time. There's also a very similar function to this that gets the 
previous month. So um, please do check the full sort of example project that shows you these particular custom functions, but if not, grab them from the Academy if that's what you want to do. Okay, back in Flutterflow, let's go to the custom functions here on the left-hand side. Let's create a brand new custom function, hit the function and give our function a name. So this one's called get next, next month date and time. Now we're gonna to need to return a value back. Of course, this is gonna be the, the new date and time, which is gonna have the month one, one month forward. And we're gonna to need to pass in an argument. So this is gonna be then the input date. And then the type of course is then gonna be a date and time itself. And that's not gonna be nullable. So always gonna pass something in. So now let's paste our code in here. There it is, our code's pasted in, hit the save function. Let's just quickly compile that. That should compile for us nicely. There you go, let's create another function. Just select that. And this function is gonna then be the get last month date and time. So it's gonna be very, very similar. So we're gonna pass in, of course, or sorry, we're gonna return the date and time. Of course, take the nullable off. We're gonna pass in the input date again. So just choose input date. This is gonna be of type then date time. Where are you? There we go. And it's not gonna be nullable. And let's just paste our code in here as well. There it is, just hit the save function. Let's quickly compile. There it goes, they're all compiled. Right, let's move back over then to our application. Let's configure up those buttons now to then use these custom functions. Okay, so let's start then with the previous month here. Let's with that one selected, move over to the actions here, open up the action flow editor, add a brand new action in. Now, of course, this one is gonna be updating the component state. because we're gonna to want to kind of pass in the current date that's currently set. And then that's gonna return us back the brand new date from that custom function. So let's now set the field. Now this is gonna be, of course, the input date, which is a component state value. Just hit say set value. And here the value to set, of course, now we're gonna call out to our custom, func uh, custom function here. So here's custom functions, and this is gonna be get last month date and time. Select that. Now the parameter that we need to pass in, of course, is the value that is currently set as the input date. So just select that, go down here to then to the component state here and then pass in the input date and hit confirm and hit confirm again. And that's, oh, we just need to set this again. Sorry, no further changes there. There we go, hit confirm and that's, all set for us. Now we can do something very, very similar now, of course, into the other button as well. So just close that down here. Let's move to this particular one, open up the actions, open up open, add the action in. And of course, this is gonna be then a state again, update the component state, set the fields. We're gonna choose the input date again, and we're gonna say select update date and time, set the value, select the value to set here. We can go now down to our custom function. And of course, it's gonna be the get the next month's date and time. Just with that selected, we just then need to go here, select this one again, and we're gonna go down to the component state. We're gonna pass it back in again, input date, and hit confirm, and that's all we need to do. Just need to go down here again, so I don't say no further changes there, hit confirm. That's all that we should need to do. Now, if I now fire this up, I'm hoping that our button should be now operational. Okay, so here we are in run mode, then let's hit the next. Uh, okay, right, so what we're seeing now is we're seeing our, our kind of our input date is actually being updated, which is great. We're kind of going up and down the months, but our calendar isn't changing. And I think I remember why, and that is because we kind of hard coded the current date and time to this particular calendar. So we now need to go and change that to use then the actual input date from our component state variable. So let's quickly go and do that now. So back within our component, move over to then the grid view here. Go to this particular section here where we got the kind of the children here, we've got the get calendar for month, just select that. And here you can see our input date was our current time. We need to kind of change that. We don't really want that, so let's edit that. And then what we want to do is we then want to just collapse that down and go to our component state variable and we want to choose then our input date like that. Hit confirm, hit confirm, and that should be working. Hit save there and that will now work for us as we move up and down the calendar. Let's go and quickly check that now. Okay, so here we are again, let's try that now, let's move forward, there we go, excellent. All of our months are changing quite nicely for us, our, our kind of our current date is nicely then selected. If I just choose then 21 here, move forward, and then move back, and of course 21 is selected. Now of course we've not set what the initial kind of selected date and time was, but if we'd done that, then that would be perfectly working for us. So I think we are all pretty well much concluded. We, in fact, we just need to do that kind of reset button. Let's go and quickly do that before we forget. 
So there we go, back on side the actual component, just choose the reset, go up to the action flow editor, open that up. So this is gonna kind of do two things. It's really kind of just gonna reset everything back to as it was. So we both need to set the component state variables to kind of be and then reset to like the current time. I think that's probably the best thing to do inside a, compa inside a component when you reset it. So let's add the actions in. Let's go to then the state here, update the component state, set the fields, and we're going to set both of these actually we're going to choose the input date first and we're going to go here and we're going to say set value and we're going to say the value to set and we're just going to go down to then the global properties and set it to be the current time like that and then we also need to add the field and we gonna do the same thing as well for the selected date so let's move that down here set the value just select this and move back down here again to the global properties and set the current time and hit confirm they should all be set what we also need to make sure that we do that when we do a reset we do need to execute that callback so we need to then press the plus here go to add action let's go to then the execute here execute the callback select the callback on select date. And of course we need to pass in the date and time. So just select that. Just move down here then to the component state parameters here and just choose the selected date, hit confirm. So then we know that will all be nicely reset for us and that should be good. Let's just give this one quick final test and see how it gets on. Okay, so here we are in test mode. Let's just choose a particular date. Let's move forward here. Let's say we're in say March, let's just reset now. And then we're back to February the 24th with that being the selected date. There you go. Hopefully you enjoyed this particular walkthrough. It was quite exhaustive. There's a lot going on here, as you can see, but kind of once you get into the mode and you kind of work out how all of this stuff works with inside Flutterflow, you should be golden. But that's pretty well much how you create a kind of a fully working custom calendar component with inside Flutterflow. So of course, if you've been following along with inside the Digital Pros No Code Academy, then thank you very much. Please do come and join. Of course, if you're not a member, the link is in the description. If you've been following this on YouTube, hopefully you've enjoyed the series and of course please do subscribe to the channel if you're not a subscriber and um, I really do appreciate if you could like the video as well if you've enjoyed this kind of full kind of walkthrough kind of tutorial so until the next video I'll see you soon